Uh, good morning, everyone. I would like to first uh, just greet uh, Mr. Tang because of his nice, welcoming introduction and just for the International Institute of Studies uh, to basically just expose the world what we have been doing on the topic of Asian Pacific region. Please also greeting the Ambassador of Chile, James Sinclair, who has been a promoter of this highly profitable visit. Uh, this is actually a second visit to Singapore. And, and please, I uh, would like to extend a warm welcoming to all the ambassadors, all the academic students, and try to understand and wrap their heads around Latin America and what it comprises, which is um, you know, rarely the case in these sort of latitudes and corners of the world as we are so far away from each other. Um, Chile, at the beginning of the 90s, uh, had a bet, placed a bet on globalization. Up until that time, Chile uh, was just um, basically uh, anchored in the Latin American world. But uh, from the 1990s, and when we became Asia Pacific Economic uh, Cooperation members, when Mexico was the only participant country, and then Peru, and then uh, we, it's our hopes Colombia might join. And just after 20 years, we can now state that more than 50% of uh, all the uh, trade, international trade that Chile promotes is actually with Asia. We comprise over more than 60 agreements, free trade agreements, and we have participated in the early beginnings of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We would just like talking to the Prime Minister, Joe Kutong, um, yesterday, with whom we started the P4, uh, together with Chile, Singapore, Brunei, and Indonesia. There's a trajectory and a walking path in the past of our country to integrate globalization. And just, I'm just going to give you a figure. Nowadays, two thirds of the uh, GPD is actually uh, placed on imports and exports services and goods. So our economy is one, just open to the world and just taking advantage of the fact that it's a very open economy, um, we would like to extend welcoming bridges of negotiation with the Asia Pacific region as it is our desire and I hope and our belief that this is a thriving economic area. So now moving on to, you could just follow up the screen as I just go over the notes. So after these 20 years, we have two embassies in the area, four consulates in the Asia Pacific region, and 14 uh, uh, economic and trade uh, offices in the whole area. We have an active presence in all the uh, regional bodies and organizations with the Forum of the, um, with the uh, Pacific Alliance and Forum for the Asia Pacific Region after um, the hardest negotiations. We also have high level negotiations with many Asian countries, which basically mean uh, a strategic alliance. And several agreements with many interparliamentary groups. Under this framework, in 2014, the president of Chile uh, asked me uh, to, uh, to represent Chile as an ambassador at large, an honorific ambassador for which I have been working for the last two years. Our 
trade has been targeted in the Asia Pacific region for the last 20 years, and this is a reason why the first entrepreneurial uh, um, partners of um, Chile are Japan, China, and Korea. Korea is a special case in point. Special case in point. As a free trade agreement that was signed by Korea, Korea actually just signed its first trade agreement with Chile, which was surprising to us. Now we are having a seminar actually this June just to assess the um, the quality of um, of these agreements. Korea has in fact more trades. Um, coming and going with Chile than with any other European countries. So for us, it is actually more important than any other European um, country, independently speaking. So in this framework, we will just see, as you can just pay attention to the grid on the screen, we haven't actually just put forward all the uh, mining and uh, fishing there, but um, you can see all the all the other different sectors which have been committed into the graph just behind me. Um, then here we can also see the balance of uh, just from early 2000 when we were just about to negotiate the free trade agreement. Um, you know, with some European Union you know, members and with the US, we were also negotiating with China, Japan, and with more countries of the Asia Pacific region. And of course, some of them, you know, first and foremost, um, well, first to sign were Singapore and Malaysia. There you can see all the export figures and import figures as well, which in um, at the beginning were just like primary products. But now, um, these have been diversified, and um, the, the bulk, which was first mining, uh, has been now converted and has just become a fabric, a winery, salmon. So there's a diversification of products and manufacturing which has um, made us very competitive in the Asia Pacific region. In the case of, and just to give a few examples, Chile is the first exporter in Japan of wine, and it's the second one, a uh, second top exporter in China of wine as well. We are the second exporters of uh, salmon just behind Norway, and we're just expanding our exports. In the next frame and slide, I might be able to see uh, the free trade agreement with uh, South Korea um, P4 in 2006, which was the birth and the foundation of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We also have some uh, partial reach agreements, which are um, not um, that really f profitable. Um, that is the case with India, which is a partial scope agreement, which we struck in 2007, and which we partly want to strengthen um, in our visit to Thailand and then um, India, so that we can just um, strengthen uh, with the five countries that we already signed uh, um, with ASEAN countries, that is the case with Thailand. We signed already um, the agreement, and we are entering negotiations with Indonesia. Thailand was signed in 1st January this year, and it came to force in, on the same 1st of January. And now we are entering negotiations to sign an agreement with India and the Philippines. Last gathering of APEC um, was to enter negotiations with the um, Philippines to get them to sign a free trade agreement. And we, it is our hope that every Asian member will become a free trade agreement um, partnership of Chile in the long run. These slides shows 
the consequences of the agreement signed. When we first started this uh, policy 20 years ago, there was no, there was not really a drive force that basically pushed at these economic uh, bilateral agreements. People couldn't really see the scope of it. So all these treaties and agreements at the beginning uh, took ages to basically have them signed. Just you know, to give you an example, Mercosur was one of them. This graph shows the dates of all the agreements that we signed for the last 20 years and uh, just comes to show the significance of the importance with um, the importance of the commerce and trade with the Asia Pacific region. I highlighted it at the beginning, two thirds of our uh, products are placed in um, foreign lands. As you can see, Bolivia and Venezuela were together with us in this adventure. As we opened our frontiers and borders to the world, we signed agreements with almost every single Latin American country. Already by year 93, we entered negotiations with Mexico, then we signed the treaty and agreement with Mexico. By 1996, we were already partners of Mercosur, which is made up of Brazil, Uruguay, and Paraguay. So, at that time, um, we were said to be leaving uh, Latin uh, America just because we were putting our uh, views um, on Asia, but the truth is we actually want a bridge between the two worlds, Asia and Latin America. And the most notable thing is um, the Chilean uh, companies have invested more than $100 million in Latin American companies, which might be uh, conceived or uh, perceived as a very small figure, but um, it is actually the GDP, it's like 40% of GDP of Chile. Now if we compare this figure, like how much Brazil invested in uh, Latin America, how much is the GDP of Brazil? 40% would be uh, like many hundreds of uh, million dollars. So for Chile, even though it might, it might look like a small amount, it is actually 40% of the GDP. So we have never left the Latin American community. Just before getting on to the next slide, I'd like to extend a warm welcome in, just because I didn't see her, the ambassador of um, Singapore um, in Chile, with whom I'm just entering negotiations and talks, um, because I know we will be doing uh, some fruitful partnership and business. And so blueberries here, wine, you can see many products um, through which we have been establishing Chile in their focus and on the spots in the Asia Pacific region. In this one, you can see China. Um, we could also mention um, cherries and blueberries in China, also bulk wine, when in February, uh, February the 7th, uh, China celebrated the New Year. And uh, Chile just sold for Chinese New Year on the 7th of February an amount uh, equaling 500,000 millions. Um, and we signed an agreement with the um, ABAC company, with which now, um, now we have become active members of trade members selling and we sold more than four million for from the platforms of our winery in Chile and uh, we saw um, and in the case of cherries uh, we provided China um, 
with all the cherries they um, they wanted for the celebration of the New Year's Eve. All the products we uh, provide each with are certified the highest quality and they come certified from the area where they're produced or grown and uh, you have a seal of approval. Why has this been so successful? So Chile returns to democracy after 20 years and in a small country like Chile with uh, 18 million people um, it became crucial to become economically strong. So what are the reasons of Chile's success? All these agreements are at the crux and are at the core of our strengthening and becoming stronger, in not only in the Latin American uh, community, but also in the Asia Pacific region. I'm just gonna point out the special case of just over a year ago, we established the Confucius uh, centers in Chile. Several countries such as Brazil, Mexico, and Peru wanted to uh, host and become the headquarters of uh, Latin America. But finally, it was actually down to us to host um, it, just because we signed the first free trade agreement with uh, China just before um, diplomatic relations started. So, in a way, it was fair for China to just deploy all their centers, Confucius centers in Chile. So what are the challenges and prospects that we have in the AP region? Of course, the base is a good one, but uh, further challenges lie ahead. We know nowadays that the, the Asia Pacific region is a, a prolific partner of uh, trade. And here you are, a list of all the things that we've been working on on that slide. Just like the regional forum with ASEAN. We hope in April to visit Indonesia to achieve an agreement and uh, just for them to become part of ASEAN. Also to uh, close partnership and uh, free trade agreements as well with more countries in Asia and in the particular case of South e Southeast Asia would be to solidify this um, relation with Chile. And another point is the uh, commercial treaties um, just put in the uh, limelight all the uh, taxes now is not really that important, but today migration is even more important. And protectionism by uh, nationalistic measures for protectionism of any, any products or goods at a national level. Also exchange students um, going to Latin America to study or just coming over to Singapore from Chile to study. And this is um, at the core of our agenda nowadays. So this TPP is opening a new door, but we are also revising just because uh, it has been 10 years now since we first signed the free trade agreements with Korea and just many other countries. We have an interest and in the last uh, 10 years we have been doing so to uh, diversify our exports and just includes the small and medium-sized companies because we know that it's always the big concerns that profit. But the small companies don't really have the structure to just be present in the market and just uh, take an active role. So from the point of view of the government, what we want to do is just like drive um, and just build up momentum for the medium and small companies to just do well. We participated in the um, work fair of Shanghai, which is a free trade area where 30 small and medium-sized companies uh, took part. Just the same as I was mentioning um, before with Alibaba. 
here, small and medium-sized companies start achieving or just at least sharing um, what uh, big companies also have, which is greater privileges. We have also been boosting uh, the um, Asian relations an economic boost from Asia into Chile and the foreign investment that Asian countries have been putting into Chile. For us, um, it has been very important for us in water, infrastructure, um, all the infra We can just look at each other's countries, Singapore and Chile, and we look at uh, Singapore as one of the best um, regions um, more thriving in the world. Now in Chile, we have more astronomical centers than anywhere else in the world. We have the telescope looking into the stars that will have a plateau of over 40 square meters. We also have an observatory, which is a um, called Charanta, which is by far the largest in the world. Um, ESA started this project, which is a European Southern Ob Observatory, in which many Asian countries also participated, and these I would like to also highlight and just bring attention to. The next slide shows, and not so much the figures, but just it comes to show the diversification of our exports. If we had done this like 60 years ago, it would have been mining just uh, manganese, um, silver, just mining overall. So basically now it is our intention to just amplify and expand to many other products as you can see here in this graph. And of course, in so doing, we just want to um, give small and medium-sized companies a boost so they can just profit from a piece of the cake. And this is our intention in the government to support small and medium-sized companies. Here you can also see some figures of the prospects and challenges in the AP region. Some details about the tasks that we will deepen our understanding in this year. So as I was saying, uh, we, will, we will be in Thailand for the inauguration of the treaty, also in Indonesia. We have a forum just ready to start in Korea to just carry out the, the, the treaty and agreements that has come into force, has been in force, sorry, for the last 10 years. We are also getting ready a partial scope with India we were there in November last year, and we just went over all the red tape and bureaucracy, so that's done. So basically, we just need green light from them to just, which would give us um, a hands-on approach in another very important sector. Uh, there are two things I would like to explain here, because they our reality in seeking all these agreements. The first one is the Pacific Alliance. We have had, and we are proud to say this, um, we, are, we are very clear in saying, sorry, that we had a um, quite an experience with Mercosur, Brazil and Argentina uh, were the third and fourth um, export members with the um, with Chile. Now, if we take oil and gas out of the equation, if we take them out of the equation, then it would be reduced to nearly nothing. So, Mercosur hasn't actually proved to be such a good um, partnership uh, with Chile. But for the last year, we have been making up this Pacific Alliance, which has proved with participating uh, funding countries such as Mexico, Peru, Bolivia, and Chile. There are more countries to be participating as well with an interest. Yesterday and just before yesterday, we were just uh, visiting the Chancellor of Costa Rica, who's also visiting Singapore at the time. He was also 
we were also last year visiting Panama because they would like to um, just become members of um, Mercosur and the Pacific Alliance as well. Now, the Pacific Alliance represents many millions of countries and uh, 1.5 trillion dollars of GDP. So we think this is a highly um, profitable economic area for us both to um, rack in profits. So there's a need that the ambassador of Chile already highlighted for us to bridge over uh, between the already established uh, countries or the observatory members such as Singapore um, with which we just want to build up a better agreement with a much larger scope and just be welcoming to any other members to join in because it's very different to uh, strike, a, strike a partnership with any European Union members or US members. I think we need no middleman here. We can just strike partnerships and close an agreement just directly between Latin America and the Asia Pacific region and this would be highly, highly profitable for both sides. The Pacific Alliance it's in a very few years has just transformed 90% um, of the trade at zero tax which is not easy at all. We have also introduced all the topics that we are just nowadays talking about. Visas, for example, come in the first place because migration is at the core of our views and uh, now visas are being um, basically facilitated from Latin America to come over and visit, or not only visit, but only also work in the Asia Pacific region and vice versa. The ambassador was also telling us many people from the Philippines were asking for a visa to come and work in Chile. And that's exactly what we want to do. It's like free movement of people under the framework of our relations. And logically, there's a logistic aspect um, and face to this which is, you know, all the launching of products from Latin America um, need to be given a boost um, because, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to land in the Asia Pacific region and vice versa. And um, it is our intention to connect uh, both areas and just create this platform of strengthen it rather because it is existing one, just as Panama was highlighting in our last meeting. So um, in this sense, uh, Panama is open its uh, ditch and doors for uh, any vessels and any ships uh, traveling through Panama, um, having as a destination as Asia Pacific uh, region. In that concern, I have to say like more than from 15 to 18,000 containers have been already traveling and, and profiteering from um, traveling, uh, taking advantage of the Panama Canal, which shortens um, the traveling by one or two days. The ASEAN has already summoned another um, gathering in this sense uh, in Jakarta, Indonesia um, this year. That is regarding the um, nowadays um, reality. Just please get, uh, you can get any more data from the slides, of course. Oh, and I'd like to mention and just, you just mentioned the uh, Trans-Pacific um, Partnership. The birth of the Trans-Pacific Partnership was created and founded with the Emerit um, Prime Minister of Singapore who visited Chile in the old years and uh, together with uh, many more countries, we managed to create this platform 
um, even though we went through thick and thin, um, and there were years where we didn't really profit that much with the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation, we know it is um, not easy to uh, close a bilateral agreement between APEC um, countries and Latin America, but we just face up um, all these um, prospects and challenges in the future with an optimistic view. That is the case of United States, Japan, and uh, Latin American countries, um, which has been um, highly profitable as well, just as any other APEC country agreements. <laughs> this has been um, basically um, for the last 30 years in Chile, people think that um, for the last 30 years we haven't really achieved much, but, um, but then again, um, it, it, it represents two thirds of our, our GDP. In what regards the uh, international economics, uh, we can actually draw a very important percentage um, more than 30% actually of the world's economics is actually centered around these sort of agreements. We know that the Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, negotiations ended in November last year in Atlanta and in February this year was signed by all the chancellors which has to be ratified by all parliaments. S the United States is just running the election campaign so they won't really come to discuss and negotiate any any TTP further just because they are too busy entering the election campaign. So we will give them one more year so we can just all um, gather and just discuss uh, the details of um, this agreement. Also the Philippines is um, at the core of our attention because, you know, what regards the Trans-Pacific Partnership, um, we know that there will be several discussions, um, but I can clearly state we are the only country of the TTP which has a free trade agreement with every single one of the countries in the Trans-Pacific uh, Partnership. In Chile, what we did, we set a really high bar and uh, we will um, fight to uh, basically solidify these uh, agreements and treaties and we won't back down whatever, um, no matter what. Um, the pharmaceutical industries, for example, or the patents, or intellectual property. Just to mention special case of uh, pharmaceutical patents. Uh, signed by Chile in the US in 2004. Um, the um, US wasn't uh, really given the seal of approval um, for the TTP with Chile. Um, for like 18 years and in the case of Chile with the patents um, it took us five years to just have it to get the ball rolling and just finally get the TTP done so we could enter negotiations through a TTP agreement with um, both the United States and Japan. TTP is open, is a gate to opening um, and providing more opportunities. Everything we have done, as far as the TTP goes, uh, just comes to improve our relations with the Asia Pacific regions and has come to show the relevance of um, all the things we have been talking about. Just going to point out briefly some of the things that I consider most important. Uh, the uh, access to uh, markets, that is the case of Japan, Malaysia, Vietnam and Canada. 
what well, regards the uh, public sale. So, public sale in Chileans, uh, Chilean uh, entrepreneurs can now access uh, the Peruvian market and Malaysian market as well. TTP just further strengthens um, the health and phytosanitarian um, health trade. So TTP just only comes to um, strengthen the stock market of of the 12 member states. So in this in this way, we are all. We are all just uh, profiting from the non-existing tax uh, between the um, Pacific Alliance countries and the TTP. Uh, the export of services represents from 10 to 15 percent of our GDP. And, and here I'd like to highlight the transparency that we have been carrying out all these negotiations and while well, the selling of um, the goods and services with also qualified labor force, also foreign investment has come into an important place where um, public sector is thriving And also, um, any any small and medium-sized companies, as I was saying before, um, can profit from the TTP. Also, the addition and integration of environmental um, issues into the TTP is a is great progress for TTP. Intellectual property, just since the early beginning. All the proposals talked about negotiations pr producing or translating into m just more an agreements and ways of dealing with things. And so the most critical uh, point as well would be the patent of some pharmaceutical products as well, which come also under the framework of the TTP. A different sector, which in our view is also greatly favored, is the agricultural and food sector, as it has been the case for the last 20 years. Many of these topics um, are relevant to the uh, free trade agreements as well, and um, of course, it can only help to strengthen them. So. Summing up and in conclusion, what we would like to highlight is Chile um, took steering wheel in negotiating with, um, with Asia Pacific regions when uh, the per capita income in Chile in the 90s, just um, entering the democracy, was um, $9,000 and now after 20 years of democracy is actually $23,000 per capita. So you can see there's great inequality, not only Chile but in many, many nations of the world. So that's why part of the policies um, taken by the Chilean ambassador has been so. This has changed Chile, the infrastructure and we have to share this with the world. Our economic growth is not only to say, oh, this is how we play the game and we are doing better. No, we have to share this experience with the world just so we can all learn from it. We know that after the great crisis of 2008 and 2009, and what's happening in the financial structures all over the world, which is ever changing, um, and we know that Latin American countries have little representation in the economic um, in the economic trade. 
um, at a global level. So we want to be become competitive. We want to become efficient. We want to be heard. Even though it's only 18 million uh, Chileans, we sat with the president Chan Zemin from China, and um, I thought myself, how am I going to be requiring any conditions from China when China is a massive country? We cannot even compete in population products. Who are we to impose any conditions on, on this first world power? Same thing happened to me when we started entry negotiations with the European Union and with the US President Clinton. But in the end, this is all good. All the markets are open. People move. So these agreements protect us and take care of us, all the small countries, not the biggest ones. So this is our challenge that lies ahead. This is our first, this is the best opportunity for us to take advantage of. We have to seize the opportunity. And so therefore, I would like to um, thank I would like to thank all the Singaporean authorities with uh, whom we have been maintaining a very fruitful dialogue. Singapore is a um, very relevant country when we wanted to um, join the APEC and build a trans-Pacific agreement. All the authorities in Singapore are aware of the interconnection and balance between the Pacific Alliance and its new members and ASEAN, just to create a new um, profitable um, stage where we can um, no longer need a middleman and we can always and we can make our members, our population feel they have an active role in both sides, just both Latin America and Asia Pacific region. So I want this to permit and trickle down to every single citizen. So and for that we need to work with optimism. There were many people who didn't believe us in Chile at the beginning. Then, after visiting many countries and seeing all the profitable income we were just bringing into the country, then everyone wanted to jump into the bandwagon because they saw, wow, this is actually a very good opportunity to, um, to business. Nowadays, there are like 250 uh, Chilean companies um, just doing business in the Asian Pacific regions and we want this we want to take this further and we will always have the support of the Singaporean authorities which uh, we want to thank right now please thank you very much